F-22 Raptor renews its claws, and F-16 can shake off the old days. The military's long known the truth. In order to win on the ground, one must win in the air. This thesis can be considered an axiom. The last time this axiom was tested, or rather is still being tested, was in the Russian-Ukrainian war. Many military experts are unanimous. If Russia could gain air superiority, Ukraine would be defeated, as Russian strategic bombers would tear down all bridges across the Dnieper River in a few days, and supplying Western weapons to the war zone would become impossible. That's why all countries seeking to represent something in this world seek to acquire combat aircraft. And the more powerful a country, the more advanced its planes. The most powerful country is the USA, and it has the most powerful combat aircraft. B-1 and B-2 strategic bombers, F-22 and F-35 fighters. It also has an impressive fleet of several obsolete fighters, the F-18 and F-16. True, many countries would be happy to have such obsolete aircraft, which even now are capable of performing almost all tasks in modern warfare. This video will focus on the world's most advanced fighter, the F-22 Raptor. How the U.S. is constantly sharpening the fangs of this formidable beast of theirs so that they can take a long bite out of any prey. And at the end, we'll talk about the old veteran F-16, which may get a chance to prove that it's old for its years, but by no means for its combat capabilities. Predator was produced from 1997 to 2011. A total of 195 vehicles were produced, of which 187 were in production. With the exception of a few lost vehicles, they remain in service and are up to the task. The first production F-22s reached operational readiness and became full-fledged combat units in 2004 and 2005. It's not difficult to calculate that these aircraft have remained in service for more than 15 years and have had time to exhaust a significant portion of their service life. The last fighters will celebrate their 10th anniversary this year, which also affects their condition and prospects. The F-22, even decades after production was discontinued, still retains the title of the most sophisticated and expensive tactical aircraft in the world. This status is reflected in a certain way in the specifics of operation, maintenance, and modernization. In particular, there's a need for a long and continuous process of repair and gradual renewal. To date, F-22 aircraft have undergone several upgrade and refurbishment programs, one of the largest and most important, the Structural Repair Program, ended in December 2020. Ended to give an almost immediate start to a new program, Advanced Raptor Enhancement and Sustainment, ARIES for short. This program was announced in August 2020, even before the Structural Repair Program was completed. The modernization was to begin in the summer of 2021 and last five years. In November 2021, it became known that the U.S. Air Force has signed a $10.9 billion contract with Lockheed Martin for this program. The scope of modernization is not specified. We only know that the work will be carried out in Fort Worth, Texas. At that, the contract makes the term of modernization implementation 10 years, until October 31, 2031. These works will prolong the service life of the F-22 up to the middle of this century and even up to the 60s when they'll finally be replaced with aircraft of the sixth generation. Now about modernization itself. Although the details of it are not disclosed for obvious reasons, it's said only that the avionics and software will be updated. The radar station will be improved and an optical locating station integrated with helmet-mounted sights will be installed. New communication equipment will improve the controllability of F-22 units the old stealth covering will be replaced with a new one borrowed from the F-35. More advanced air-to-air -air missiles will be included. Now let's decipher this. Despite its perfection, the F-22 has no infrared search and tracking sensors. Why are they so important? The F-22 has radar that'll see a target with an effective scattering area of 10 square feet at 125 to 150 miles. The Russian Su-35 main battlefield fighter has an effective scatter area of 7 square feet that is, it'll be visible on Raptor radar at a distance of 85 to 100 miles. You'll say that this is wonderful, because from such a distance, the Russians will not see the F-22. Yes, he will. The plane itself will indeed be invisible to the Russian dryland locator, but it'll give itself away by working radar. And infrared sensors work in passive mode, i.e. they do not radiate anything and therefore do not demask the airplane. 
When designing the F-22, the designers were well aware of this and incorporated these sensors into the design. But then politics intervened. The plane was already too expensive. A similar piece of solid gold was cheaper. Therefore, the officials insisted that this system should not be installed on F-22. But now it was decided to eliminate this flaw. Now about the integration with helmet-mounted sight. F-22 pilots will get helmets like F-35 pilots with JHMCS technology. This technology allows the pilot to receive information about the ground and air targets and give target designation commands to the air-to-air -air missiles by turning his head to the target in the line of sight without using manual control and without changing the fighter's flight direction. Stealth coding will also be borrowed from the F-35. Since the Lightning was developed later, it's clear that it has this coding better. And the F-22 will finally be integrated with air-to-surface missiles such as the AGM-158 JASM developed by the same Lockheed Martin and which the F-35 is armed with. Also, the obsolete air-to-air -air missiles AIM-9M and AIM-120C will be replaced by the newer AIM-9X and AIM-120D. In short, the Predator will get sharper and longer claws. Its vision will be improved and it'll become less visible. The F-22 fighter will still be the most formidable until the sixth generation machines appear. What about the old F-16? There have already appeared many reports that Western countries are going to transfer some F-16s to Ukraine. What are its prospects in the Russian-Ukrainian war? F-16, due to its versatility and relatively low cost, is the most mass-produced fighter of the fourth generation. Over 4,600 aircraft have been built and are successful in the international arms market. It's in service in 25 countries. In the United States, 2,231 of these aircraft are in service. The last of them were transferred to the U.S. Air Force in 2005. Judging by press reports, deliveries of F-16s from the Netherlands are most probable. The country had a very impressive Air Force consisting of more than 200 of the same F-16s. With the lapse of time, the air fleet of the country was reduced to 68 planes, and here among the decommissioned planes, it would be easily possible to allocate a considerable number of aircraft for transferring them to Ukraine, especially taking into account that the Netherlands will receive its F-35s before Poland does. Meanwhile, the Netherlands only has early modifications of the F-16AM fighters, which are improved versions of the F-16A with a more diverse stock of ammunition, including rockets for anti-aircraft targets, AIM-120 AMRAAM. At the same time, the aircraft is equipped with a large number of precision air-to-ground weapons. Considering the combat capabilities of the Dutch fighters, it will be very difficult for them to win air supremacy in Ukraine. The F-16 Fighting Falcon will confront the Russian MiG-31BM, SU-30SM, and SU-35S, which are equipped with phased antenna array radars and long-range R-37 missiles with a range of over 185 miles. And let's not forget that Russian forces are tightly covered by various air defense systems, including the S-400 and the BUK-M1. Their technical characteristics leave no chance for the F-16s. There's another problem. Who will sit at the steering wheel of the fighter? If the Ukrainian pilot who's just mastered this aircraft at one of the NATO bases, his chances of winning the air combat are even more reduced and become practically zero. But if the pilots of Western countries with a lot of flight time on these planes, then everything's not so unambiguous. Obviously, all these problems make the Western allies of Ukraine not give an unambiguous answer about deliveries of F-16s yet. The risks are too great. Congressman Adam Smith, a member of the U.S. House Armed Services Committee, recently said sending F-16 fighter jets would be an unwise use of resources, that Ukraine needs to win the war with Russia. It's necessary not to only train pilots, but it's also necessary to train mechanics, airfields capable of receiving F-16s, and to have all the necessary spare parts for the fighters to be able to function. And a Pentagon spokesman said that the U.S. sees no point in starting to train Ukrainian pilots to use F-16s now because Ukraine may never get them. But earlier Western allies said that it was impossible to supply Western tanks to Ukraine either. Nevertheless, the first German Leopards are already in this country. Could this happen to the F-16s as well? Well, we'll observe this development of events and inform you about them in due time. In the meantime, we can state the escalation of the conflict in Ukraine and the limit of this escalation is World War III. We really hope it doesn't come to that. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up so more people can see it, 
And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There will be many more interesting videos about modern weapons.